What's brown and sticky? A stick. I'm going to stop now. Like, that's my best joke. I've just led with the winner, and it gets worse from here. Um, so, uh, thank yous. Like, I had this moment when I came in here on Monday, and I thought there'd be like 10 people floating around, and there was like 200 of you. Um, and that was a really humbling experience to realize that so many of you were interested in coming along to a conference. Um, and that conference has been arranged by um, Ashley, who I think we can all agree has done a totally stellar job sorting this all out, making sure that things like the wireless work as best it can do. Um, and I think everything's gone really smoothly. And I think she deserves a round of applause. Uh, and I'm sure she won't mind if people want to buy her a celebratory drink later. Um, the other thing is, like, the conference wouldn't be the conference, the project wouldn't be the project if it wasn't for all of you who participate, come along, ask questions. Like, they may be difficult, uncomfortable questions, like, why aren't we on GitHub? Um, and they may be fun ones, like, I really enjoy using this, what's the best way to do it? Um, but I appreciate you all being here, and I think it's totally awesome. So I think. You deserve a round of applause for yourselves and just being great. Well, you're an incredibly modest bunch. If someone had said applaud yourself, I'd have done it for a long time. Um, and the other thing is, this is one of the first times where we've managed to get most of the developers, the core developers, together in a single room. Um, can I ask them to stand up? If you've got the commit bit on the project, can you stand up? OK. Look at those people. Uh, not yet, but you should stand up as well. You've done good work with water. We still love you, man. Um, thank you very much, guys. The project wouldn't be going half the speed it is or doing half the things it's capable of without you. Thank you. And, you know, since I'm doing thank yous, I should probably um, say thank you to ThoughtWorks. So Jason started Selenium when he was working at ThoughtWorks. We heard him tell the story. Um, I actually started WebDriver when I was working at ThoughtWorks. Uh, Paul Hammond likes to say, if you cut a thought worker, a testing framework will fall out. <laughs> He's not wrong. Um, and sort of thought workers have this sort of ability to sort of look at a problem and they go, I need a testing framework around that. And then they write something that's really quite good. I mean, Selenium's done pretty well for itself. Um, Water, that was under the auspices of ThoughtWorks for a while. Um, yeah, that's done pretty well. There's new ones arriving like Frank, which looks like a really interesting way of automating iOS apps. Um, and of course, there's Twist, which is the commercial product that ThoughtWorks have. Uh, for doing automated testing. The Twist framework is kind of interesting in that it provides an IDE for testers. And while they were working on it, Thorx went, what's the best way to automate a web browser? Um, and for a while, they toyed with writing their own. You know, give a thought worker a problem, they'll go ahead and do it. So one of the announcements that I'm really quite pleased to be able to make today is that ThoughtWorks have donated um, the fully formed Krypton framework to the Selenium project. Um, it'll be arriving at some point in some source tree. It'll be great. And it solves one of the sort of fundamental problems that we've not yet solved in the framework, which is getting native events working on OS X. So sometime in the beta 4, beta 5 timeline, we'll merge in those changes. Um, you'll all have a better product, and it'll be thanks to the hard work of ThoughtWorks. Um, particularly, uh, Hawk and Rayberg. I've got the names here, you see, so I can remember who they are. Um, Hawk and Rayberg, uh, Manish, whose surname I never found out, and uh, Vivek Pralad, who have done just a fantastic job. So thank you, ThoughtWorks. <laughs> and that's the thank yous out of the way, thankfully. Um, so, you know, it's, it's been an interesting conference. We've heard a lot of, of bits and pieces, um, but there's one piece of the story that's missing out, and that is 
why in the name of all that's holy do you want to go from Selenium 1 to Selenium 2? Like it's a new API, new technology stack. Like, why would you do it? First reason why you want to do it is one entirely of self-interest. The Selenium 1 code base is now pretty stable, um, and it's in maintenance mode. We'll be putting in bug fixes, of course, but we won't be adding new features. And over time, we're going to be putting more and more effort into the Selenium 2, the web driver bindings. Like, if you want to stay on the thing that people are actively maintaining and working on, like the people that stood up earlier today, almost all of them spend all their time on Selenium 2 and WebDriver. Like, that's where the action is. That's where the fun things are. Um, so that's one reason. The other reason, um, I've got speed on my notes. Um, we, we drive browsers pretty quickly, um, particularly IE. How many of you use IE for your testing? Yeah, that's almost every hand in the room. Um, it's, it's pretty slow when you're using XPath, right? There's a couple of nods. Um, there was a team at Google that switched to using the Selenium-backed web driver. They took their tests, and they made them run 50% faster, half the time for running the tests. It's pretty impressive. Um, the other thing that we're doing over time is a sort of, well, we're moving the project forward. And the scope of the project, the, the ambition, has changed. Like, we used to be really happy with just being able to click a link, and that was OK. And then it was like, you know what? We'd be happier if we could test these Ajax apps. And we started doing that. I don't think that's good enough. Like, I did a talk on Monday, um, uh, on Sunday even, to the water developers. And I described the Selenium team as crazy. Like, there must be something wrong with these people. And I'll tell you why. We support Firefox, Internet Explorer, Opera, Safari, Chrome, iPhone, Android, HTML unit. There's a headless WebKit version. That's like nine browsers. But we don't just support nine browsers. We support Firefox 3, 3.5, 3.6, 4, IE6, IE7, IE8, IE9. Like, Mozilla don't support Firefox 3, but we do. <laughs> so, you know, and, but that's not all, because we support it on Windows, Linux, and OS 10. <laughs> and we don't just support it on Windows, Linux, OS 10. We do OS, you know, you get the picture. Like, the explosion of different versions that we could have of the, like, you'd have to be insane to go, I know what I'll do. I'll just make a framework that needs to be tested and run on all of those. Um, and, you know, developers are always going to do something slightly interesting with their setup. Like, so we occasionally tell people that Sigwin's a bad idea. But you get what I mean. Like, so you have to be totally crazy. And so, like, the ambition of the project is to not be crazy. It would be really nice to, well, maybe not totally crazy. It would be nice to be slightly crazy, but not too crazy. Um, and so that's what we're working on. And the way we're going to avoid being totally crazy is we're going to ask the browser manufacturers to step up to the plate, be responsible, um, and help us with the testing frameworks. So the interesting thing is Selenium is, what, seven, eight years old? Seven years old. Um, WebDriver is uh, about four years old. Um, it's now pretty ancient. So I'm just looking for the thing that I can plug in. Oh, never mind. I'll do it in a second. Um, yeah, WebDriver is about four years old. Uh, you know, water, pretty ancient as well. I mean, in internet years, which are like 10 times dog years. Thank you. Um, so what we'd like to do is figure out how browser vendors can, can come to the party. Like, this is a solved problem. And Opera. Um, who we saw speaking earlier today, took the first steps along that path where um, they worked on the Opera driver. And uh, that was pretty cool. You know, um, suddenly Opera went from one of the browsers which we supported, inverted quotes, and the testing worked, but it wasn't perfect, to something where there was something truly stellar. Thank you, Jason. My minion here is running away. I'll close that. I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll carry on talking. Start recording. Thank you very much.
Um, so uh, one of the things that I really wanted to be able to show you today was, um, what well, was this? It says go test Chrome. Go is the, the command line. This is uh, a version of WebDriver. Um, you can see here why developing software takes a long time. This is a JVM spinning up. It's having a quiet think about life, the universe, what it's going to do this evening. Who knows? I haven't got the Gecko SDK detected. I have got the iPhone simulator. Um, and at some point in the not too distant future, if everything goes according to plan, which it will, Chrome appears. And this is the current Chrome driver. If you go to selenium.googlecode.com, uh, selenium this is what you get. It's working. Um, but it's not too slow. No, that seems to be going relatively well. But we could do better than that. If we were in the browser, we could go significantly faster. This is the new Chrome driver. Again, I'm waiting for my JVM to start. But you never realize you were going to get the singing version. Here we go. Are you ready for this? This when I saw it, was awesome. It's a blank screen. There it goes. Did, did you hear that? <laughs> Someone just saw it run, and it goes, oh, shit. <laughs> That's one of the milder reactions that I've heard. Like, the, 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 the Opera driver is almost as fast as this. Like, when you embed it, uh, uh, the support in the browsers, it goes crazy fast. Like, the sort of fast you can't believe, and with a level of support that you wouldn't want to, to want to engineer yourself. Like, this is hooked directly into the browser, and the best thing about it, we didn't write the code. This source code here, this is a, a binary you can download, um, and it's sitting in the Chromium source tree. Like, I was going to do a ceremonial delete of the code in our tree, because we no longer need to maintain this. This is now maintained by the Chromium team. That's the future. <laughs> also, holy shit, that thing is fast. So this is running about 400 tests in just over two minutes. Uh, yeah, we could do that. Um, actually, the, the, the latest, the tests are now entering the point where they're I.O. bound. So, um, you know, we're now waiting for the network to finish its stuff. Like, we're not pegging the CPU. We're just transferring bits around, and that's the constraining factor for the speed of the tests. Um, yes. So, and, and, and this is it. Like, that leads us to the challenges that the project is going to face. Like, we've done amazing things. Like, I was talking to Jason, and... When he saw this, he sort of took a step back and he went, it's like we've landed on the moon. <laughs> like, we tell people that we could do it, and you know, they go, when are you going to do it? And we say, well, we've already done it. We'll get there. Um, but there are challenges ahead. Like, how do you do it, take an open source project and turn it into a standard? We don't really know. You're going to be watching us try and fumble our way through it. Um, and hopefully, we'll do a really good job of it. It appears to be going quite well so far. We'll find out. Um, obviously, we need the involvement of Apple and Microsoft to be involved. Um, Opera already sort of committed to it. Mozilla, we're working closely with them. They're going to be so soaking up the Firefox driver um, and at probably adding it to their Mosmil testing tool. We're getting there. Like, you know when I said about ambition? That's ambition. We're going to destroy our project, and we're going to make the world a better place in the process. Um, so, like, how are we going to, it's not enough, though, to, just to, to move the browser vendors and go, hey, you know, the, the basic problem of firing up a browser, clicking on a link, typing, solved, like, why don't you bake that in, and we'll go ahead and solve the interesting problems of testing Canvas applications using, you know, robots and, and all the fancy things we've seen, and, and, like, but we need to also help our user community migrate from the existing APIs 
to the Selenium 2 APIs, the ones that you know, are being baked into a browser. Like, that's going to be a real challenge. Like I've had several conversations over the course of, of the past few days sort of where people come up to me and go, you know, I've tried this and it hasn't worked. Um, user extensions. Like, we think we've got a good story around what we should be doing around that. Good story? Who outside of management actually uses a phrase like good story? I'm so, I apologize wholeheartedly and unreservedly. I think we know how to do most of what user extensions do. Um, you know, we're tightening the focus of the project so people who want to muck around with HTTP headers and capture network traffic, you know, we've got hooks that enable teams like, you know, to take advantage of things like the browser mob pro uh, proxy, which is, uh, you know, Patrick's brainchild. Um, but, you know, there are challenges ahead. Like, I don't know all the pieces, and I don't know how we're going to migrate all our users over. And I could really do with your help making that happen. Like, bug reports. You know, Patrick mentioned it yesterday. We need good, high-quality bug reports. Even better, we need good, high-quality patches. And I'm sorry we're not on GitHub. And I know, like, I, I have people, intelligent people, super smart people come over and sit me down, and they think, if I talk to him, like, then I can make him understand. It's, it's obvious that somebody hasn't been able to get it. There are good technical reasons why we're not there yet. Maybe when we've got rid of all the browser drivers, and uh, you know, all, the, all the binary code that we need is, is handled by the different browsers, then you know, the project will be smaller and lighter and we can move. Lobby your browser vendors. Um, Python users, I have no idea how we're going to finish writing the, uh, the web driver back to Selenium for you guys. PHP users, Perl users, I don't know. <laughs> Do any of you use PHP and Perl? Handful, hands? OK, so you'll be pleased to hear that um, after this keynote, I'm going to run away into the heritage room, uh, which is the room next door. And I'm go just going to do a developer-focused, hands-on, here's how our code base is structured, here's how the build system works, um, and, and try and provide information and a brain dump um, so that if you want to be involved with writing the PHP bindings, the Perl bindings, come along. It'll be fun. Um, if you're involved in the project and you have no idea how we build it, come along. It'll be fun. Um, if you are not interested, don't come along. It won't be fun. <laughs> um, so that's pretty cool. Like, I don't know how we're going to migrate. But like, the future looks so good. Like, you know, we've got this consolidation happening. The Wartier project, the next version of that is going to be based on the WebDriver code base. Selenium 2. That's it. The browser vendors are getting involved in our community. Like, that's fantastic. That's amazing. Um, who knows what's going to happen when HP realize that not only is browser automation a commoditized market, but it's a commoditized market that has a standard that people are using. It's going to be really interesting times. I'm looking forward to it. Um, so yeah, you were here when you saw, like, this is, this is big, Opera and Chrome. That's, you know, a sizable part of the market. Yeah, the next year is going to be fun. By the way, when do people want 2.0 final? Now, as soon as it's ready. Yeah, we're working on it. There's a big sigh from Paul. Like, so when are we going to release 2.0 final is one of those. Okay, do a poll. What should the poll be, Paul? Do you think we should release it now as is? OK. And who thinks that we shouldn't? Who couldn't care less? <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> it takes guts to come to a conference, pay for the ticket, and then go, actually, not that bothered. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of fun. Um, so the roadmap for 2.0 final, uh, oh, we need good, high-quality bug reports. Thank you. I should turn off my browser when I do these things. Um, where was I? Totally distracted. Where was I? Oh, 2.0, roadmap. Yes, where are we going? Um, so what we're looking forward to is uh, the alerts and prompts API being implemented in IE, Firefox, and a WebKit-based browser. That's pretty close. Um, and we want to finish off the advanced user interactions API. Those are the APIs that allow you to go click on an element, hold down the shift key, click here, click here, click here drag along a path and let go. Like, 
we've got an API that allows you to express those concepts. And what we'd like to do is just make it available and stable and know that it's good. And then we'll go for 2.0 final. Because, you know, it's just a version number, right? Excellent. Um, so other announcements, just looking at my list. I'm coming to an end soon. Um, and then you can fire questions at me or hurl abuse or go, how does this work then? Um, boom. Is it open? No, of course. It, if it was open, that would be useful, wouldn't it? It looked like, there we go. Gonna, hang on a sec. How many of you um, use IDE or know people who do? Like a friend of a friend uses IDE. You don't actually want to, you don't use it yourself. Um, if you use IDE and you use Firefox 4, head over to that bit.ly URL, bit.ly slash selenium IDE latest. Right, okay. It's not latest, it's nightly. Thank you, muffled voice from the audience. It will be latest in it, as many as 30 seconds. <laughs> it's there. So if you want to have a look with IDE 4, um, go have a play. The other thing as well is, like, we're trying to build our community and make it easier to join in. Um, you heard Paul talking about the documentation effort. That's going to continue. Um, but there's a proposal for Stack Exchange. Everyone familiar with Stack Exchange? It's awesome. Um, go to bit.ly selenium st stack exchange and vote for it, please. Um, we'll make it happen. There'll be a home on the internet for us, another home on the internet for us um, to, to take part in. Um, hey, everyone. It's been the first stroke second Selenium conference because we were beaten by those chaps in Kiev. Um, thank you all very much for coming along. Thank you all for being here. Um, it's been awesome. Thank you.